My wife was 35 years old and I was 36 when she got wind of an upcoming high school reunion. We lined up a babysitter for the night and were genuinely looking forward to it. I might not have known any of her old classmates, but the idea of mingling with her friends from back then was thrilling. I first crossed paths with my wife in a bar situated on the same street where we both worked. She was a hairdresser and I was employed at a print shop. The first thing that caught my eye was her stunning hair. And then, I glimpsed her eyes and I knew right then that she was going to captivate me for a long time to come. Her opening line to me was about needing a haircut, but that's a tangent. We tied the knot and welcomed two children into our lives. Our marriage had its imperfections and there were instances when we thought about taking some time apart, but whenever it came to actually packing our bags, neither of us could go through with it. There was no cheating going on at that point so it felt like every disagreement or issue could be resolved with communication and effort. Isn't that how marriages are meant to work? Our kids enjoyed a wholesome childhood, never having to overhear our heated arguments. They were 13 and 16 when we began preparing to attend her high school reunion. About two weeks before the reunion, my wife went on a Facebook spree, adding a bunch of her high school buddies. Among them were a few guys, although most of them were also married. I didn't suspect anything fishy until the sound of constant dings filled the air. Throughout our time at home together, her phone was constantly chiming. I swear I even heard it while I was in the shower or on the toilet. It went off while she was cooking dinner and even when we were saying goodnight to the kids. The excessive notifications were becoming a bit too conspicuous, and she knew it. So I finally mustered up the courage to ask her who was texting her so incessantly. Her response? It was just old high school friends catching up. Fair enough, she switched her phone to vibrate mode and suddenly the messages seemed to stop. But one night after she had fallen asleep, I heard that faint buzzing sound again. I stared at the ceiling for a good half hour before I caved in. What I read in those messages was unsettling. It was a back and forth between her and one of the guys who would be at the reunion. In one message, she mentioned how excited she was to see him again and how wonderful it would be. In another, she questioned whether he had changed over the years compared to when they were young. He replied that unfortunately, he could only have that kind of fun with her. She responded by saying they might have some fun at the reunion or afterward. He then pointed out that it seemed like she wanted to keep seeing him even after the reunion and she didn't deny it. Well, I decided to have a serious talk with her about it and she was quick to offer a heartfelt apology. She explained that he seemed lonely and in need of friends. I wasn't having any of it though and I made it clear that this wasn't an excuse for their discussions about having fun or continuing their interactions after the reunion. I went further and inquired about whether they had ever been physically intimate in the past, to which she denied. She didn't appear to be lying back then, but now that I know what I do, I'd say she was definitely not telling the truth. She asked if we could still attend the reunion and I cautiously agreed, thinking that she hadn't entirely broken my trust at that point. I figured I'd be there to keep a close eye on everything. Little did I realize, she kept on conversing with that man. Perhaps even more than before, she made sure to get her hair and nails done before the big night out. During that eventful night, the man took a few minutes to muster the courage to reintroduce himself to my wife, all while I stood by her side. The vibe I got from him was uneasy, like he could hardly look me in the eyes and I could tell he was desperate to reconnect with my wife. She returned his gaze, but there was an added layer of care about me. She introduced me in a friendly manner, but he wasn't phased. He managed to position himself close enough to keep the conversation going with her. Throughout the evening, everyone was indulging in drinks except for me. By the time I needed to use the bathroom, my wife was visibly drunk. I let her know I'd be back in a jiffy, but when I returned, both she and he were nowhere to be found. I looked around and asked one of the women from the reunion where they had gone. She mentioned they had stepped outside for a cigarette. Now my wife wasn't a smoker, but I speculated that she might have gone out to keep him company. I stepped outside scanning the area, but they were nowhere in sight. I even checked the interiors of all the cars in the parking lot. When I called her cell phone, she didn't pick up. I was both baffled and frustrated. I waited around for 45 minutes until I finally received a text message from her. It said she had gone along with the man to the nearby gas station, but since they were close to our house, he planned to drop her off there. I knew she was feeding me a load of crap. I got home about 30 minutes later to find that the babysitter had left and our kids were sound asleep. My wife was on the couch in just her underwear, also asleep. I woke her up right away and demanded an explanation. She seemed really out of it, but deep down, a part of me suspected she might be pretending. 
She mumbled something incomprehensible, attempting to explain that he had offered her a ride home because he wanted to talk about his own troubles. It was impossible to get any coherent information from her in that state. So I decided to wait until the morning to try and make sense of things. Before my wife woke up, our teenagers filled me in on their evening with the babysitter. I could barely concentrate, but it was a relief that they were already asleep when she got home, so they didn't witness anything unusual. Once my wife was awake, I wasted no time and questioned her about the events. She griped about her fuzzy memory and expressed strong regret, regret for leaving me there and for getting so intoxicated. You know, really sorry. After a few hours, she had an emotional breakdown and confessed that she had remembered what actually transpired. It seemed like she somehow sensed that I would discover the truth. She disclosed that he had asked her to step outside and talk, and she agreed. He suggested they get into his car because it was chilly, and she didn't perceive any harm in that. Then she revealed that he had coerced her into kissing and having closeness. Tears streamed down her face, though I suspected it was more due to being caught. I insisted on checking her phone, and she hesitated and tried to make excuses. I snatched the phone from her and retreated to the bathroom to examine it. And guess what? She had found the time to message the man and admit that their actions were a mistake. But even before that, messages from days before the reunion showed they had plotted to sneak away at some point, engage in physical activity, and even contemplated the possibility of her spending the night at his place. This was the final straw. Our marriage had reached its end. As I swung open the bathroom door, she stood there, pale as a ghost, staring at me like her entire existence was on the line. I let her know in no uncertain terms that it was over, that I couldn't continue with her after finding out about her calculated betrayal. Her tears flowed and she begged for my forgiveness in a barely audible voice. I reminded her that even though she was intoxicated when it happened, she had planned this affair in advance. She had chosen to shatter the trust we had built over all those years. My resolve to shield her as my wife crumbled because she had willingly let another man into her life. I didn't think she could feel any lower, but my words managed to drag her further down. She curled up into a ball, her sobs echoing through the room, while I went about doing her a few favors. I arranged for the kids to spend the night at their friend's place, hoping to shield them from the traumatic events. I collected as many of my wife's belongings as I could, neatly packing them away. I called her parents and explained the situation suggesting they come and take their daughter back home. And they did just that. Despite her resistance or inability, I helped her into their car along with her belongings. Her parents attempted to apologize and engage in conversation, but I barely acknowledged them, offering nothing more than a greeting and farewell. My wife made a few attempts to step out of the car, but they warned her that if she didn't leave with them right then, they wouldn't provide her a place to stay until she found an alternative arrangement. The weight of their words sent her into a daze. She understood that her life as she knew it had come crashing down. She remained motionless, resembling a statue as they drove her away. During the divorce and custody hearings, she kept her tears as quiet as she could. Our teenagers opted to live with me, staying in the same house and going to the same school. To her credit, she owned up to her mistakes and tried her best to co-parent with me. Now that several months have gone by, we're at a point where we can at least be friendly. I'm grateful every day that I didn't force myself to stay with her and attempt to mend things. It could have been a lot more painful for me and probably easier for her. She made her choices and I willingly followed a different path. She struggled with it at every step, but perhaps that's what she deserved. Despite moving out multiple times, she's still living with her parents, unable to find stability since this all unfolded. I, on the other hand, got remarried about a year ago and my new wife is remarkable and trustworthy so far. Sharing my experience is important to give hope to others grappling with their own harrowing life changes. Now for the top comment. This is not the first time cheating. It was the first time arranging it with this guy. Make the co-parenting as painful as possible and as psychologically traumatic for her as well. Thank you for listening to the story to the end, and if you like it, please support us with a like as well as subscribe to the channel. Write in the comments section what you think about the story.